Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is uh, Mark from Rightline Trading, and I um, thank everybody for uh, for coming in on, on Father's Day and wish every, all, all the dads out there a happy Father's Day. And uh, I just want to do a check. Can everybody see the chart okay? And, um, and hear me all right? Okay, great. All right, thank you. Now, the, the first indicator, I really um, wanted to give this, uh, this Sunday afternoon webinar really, really to, um, to highlight two indicators that we've added into our, uh, into our platform and to, show, and to show you how we use them. And um, the, the first is uh, the quant analysis indicator which consists of these three lines. Now what these three lines do is what we've done is we've looked at a large number of markets and we've looked at which markets move in the same direction as the Russell when the Russell's moving up which markets also move up with a correlation of 0.7 or greater. So if the, if the Russell is moving up, they're going to move up 70% of the time uh, in concert with the Russell. And then we looked for markets that 0.7, 70% of the time or greater move in opposite directions of the Russell. And what we've done is we found quite a few markets that do that. And we've assimilated them into these three lines that we call our quantitative analysis lines. Now the thing about these lines is that not only do they assimilate the data on, on differing markets uh, and, and break them out into three lines, but each of the markets um, move at different speeds. So that and also, the reason we call them the, the quantitative analysis lines is that each of the markets are not given the same weight. Now, if a market correlates with the same direction as the Russell, 90% of the time or greater, it's going to be weighted heavier in the analysis, in, in the indicator uh, algorithm. It's got to be greater than 0.7 or 70% of the time, but it can be as high as 90% of the time. So depending upon uh, the correlation coefficient, there's, there's, a, there's a, a quantitative assessment done and the lines are adjusted based upon the speed of the markets. Uh, they're also, that's also adjusted. So what we've come up with is, I think, the first very, very accurate quant line. And really the quant line has tremendous predictive value for determining the direction of the market. And if you look at one of our entries, that's very hard to get three greens and three reds. If you do, now this, this, this is a trade that I took in the live trading room on Friday, right here. I had all three quant lines green. Now, I'm really not going to talk much about background bias, which also um, is, is really of immense importance. And then I am going to go into our market profile, which we just haven't completed yet, but we should have out early next week. I'm going to talk about how it works, what we look for, and how we use it, use it to trade. But when all three lines go green or all three lines go red, it increases the predictive value of a trading entry tremendously. So if you take the move to the upside and then the retracement back to support, as you can, and you can see that you've broken the value area high here, um, so this value area high acts as an area of resistance to the upside, you're above it. This is, has a tremendous chance of giving you a winner. And if we look for the areas where all these lines are green, like right here, 
you get a break, you get a retracement. And that's a C candle entry. Now, this is the point of control. And this acts as a strong area of resistance to the upside. But when you have, now in order to see where the point of control really is, you have to move to the right edge. It's right there. Doesn't really move much, doesn't budge. So you have to make an assessment as, whether you, as to whether or not you want to take the C candle entry. Now, the, the background bias does multi-time frame analysis of, of, um, of trend support resistance. The fact that the, that the, uh, the color of the background is, the, is darkest green, which is the best background color we can get. And the fact that you have a C candle entry, which is, which is our strongest entry, we're engulfing everybody in this counter trend trade here, here at... Uh, um, Actually, actually, this is an A candle. Let me take that back. But it, it's a trade right off support. And you have all three quant lines green. Now, the chances of breaking the point of control are extremely good. Simply because all three quant lines are in your favor. And, it's, and you get a 13 tick trade. Now, here, you have another C candle. You have two of the three quant lines. Again, the predictive value of even two quant lines is extremely high. They're telling you in these two lines, there's six correlative markets that are either moving in the that are moving in the direction they should, either in synchrony with the with the uh, with the uh, Russell, or in in the opposite direction of the Russell to give you two out of three green quant lines. So if you take this C candle, it increases the predictive value of getting a successful trade markedly. And that's a 28 tick trade. Now here, you have to ask yourself the same question. This is a very, very tiny pivot. And we've eliminated most of these tiny pivots. We use the major swing pivots, and then we use the uh, value area low, value area high. The chance that this is going to break this to the upside is extremely good. And you'll notice that the point of control really did act as an area of resistance to the upside. And what I see happen is when you hit the point of control or a value area high, just like it does here, price tends to skid sideways. It tends, it tends to start to consolidate. And then the trade is going to occur right off support or right off resistance. As long as the quant lines stay green and you're trading right off support, background bias stays green, you consolidate sideways along the area of upside resistance, and then, and then you move through. Here's another terrific trade at 10.06 right here. And another trade right here at 10.05. Now this one again, you have a very, very small sw swing pivot. Do you think that this pivot is going to hold? Now on this candle, you have three out of three quant lines, which is extremely powerful. So what you're going to see on this candle is what's to the left of that blue line. On this candle... three out of three quant lines. Eight markets are either moving in concert to the upside or in concert in, in the opposite direction as the, um, as the Russell. And you can see on these two trades alone, this is going to give you, this could potentially, depending on how many contracts you have and what your profit target is and what your, ATMs, what your ATM is, it's going to give you two very, very nice winners right here and right here, 18 and 19. Now, once you get here, we want to trade with an MA diff of 18 or less. And once we get here, the MA diff is 39. So we know that we're way overbought. 
and the MA diff is right up here in the upper left hand corner. Now that's reading an MA diff off of the right edge. And what that's telling you is the difference between, is the space between the 50 and the 15. As it starts to widen, the market becomes overbought. And although we say 18, you can go to 21. Right, this trade right here was 32. It really was an overbought trade and a riskier trade. But what the platform really does is, it does what we wanted to do is define risk for us. And what the quant lines do is to give you trading entries with decreased risk. Now let's take a look at some trading entries where we don't have the quant lines with us. I mean, this is a beautiful entry. This, and this is early in the morning. But here's the, here's the up. Here's the down. And here's this beautiful move to the upside right here. with all three quant lines to the upside. Now I'm trying to find some entries where we don't have what we want and how they protect you against taking a bad trade. Well, let's see. Now see all, through, through this whole area here, th this, is really, this is really the middle of the night, but you can see when all three quant lines are red, and the background bias is red. Now these these are doing completely different calculations. This is looking at support and resistance and the trend on multiple higher time frames. This is looking at the correlative markets and doing a quantitative analysis of, the, of those correlative markets. So the fact that they correspond does tell you a lot though because they're being assessed by, by completely different um, uh, mechanisms. All right, here's, here's a trade. Here's a break. Whoops. Wrong. Now, this is a very, very unique indicator. Because just like the background bias, the quant line analysis is done, and it has nothing to do with price action on the chart. And I hate indicators that are driven by the chart's price action. Because every time you look at them in retrospect, uh, and you do, you, you do a pullback analysis, and, or you do analysis on a dead chart, they're always going to look great. But here's a move to the downside. It's a break of the 50. Whoops. Sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button here with the 15 down and the 15 yellow or red. Now you can take this move to the downside. You can see it's successful. It's, and the reason it's successful is it's using the point of control as an area of upside uh, resistance. It's, com it's coming down. But it becomes a very, very risky trade because you're taking it on three flat quant lines. They're not against the trade but they're not with you on the trade. So this is not a trade I would take. And I'm trying to look for another move to the downside uh, where the quant lines hold you up and you get and you get a failure. And there are really lots of them. And I'm trying to, trying to see where they are. And here, here's one. Now here's a break and a retracement and it's really really a good trade it's fairly close to the modified 15 this cream colored background is is down bias it's the second strongest color to the downside after this dark pink but if you look down here you only have one of three quant lines red and when you have two of these three yellow, then the trade becomes very problematic. And if you take this entry, what happens? You get stopped out. This candle, this, this wick, just comes to knock you out of the trade. But if you hold tight and wait for the quant lines to roll, 
and become all red, which they do later on, as as price as as the, uh, as the correlative markets change. Now, when you take the trade, you go straight down. There's no no muss, no fuss. Now, the, there's a chance. And that's a 16 tick trade. That's a nice trade. There's a chance that if you didn't take this entry, the trade would just would rot, would roll down, and you'd miss it. But here's the thing about trading with specificity and not sensitivity. If you trade with specificity and you don't get all the things that you want to to line up, and the trade becomes successful, you don't worry about it. What you're trying to do by trading with specificity is filter out the losers because a trading day is never based upon the number of winners it's always based on the number of losers that you take and if you look at this trade right here there's the move to the downside there's the C candle now it doesn't break the value area low here but look what you've got you can see that the candles outlined in order flow stochastic and momentum. You've got three quant lines. You've got the second best background bias. And down you go for a nice winner. You get a retracement right back to the value area low. And I love taking trades off the value area low to the downside are just terrific uh, setups, especially, especially when the background bias is this color. And when all three correlative markets are moving to the downside like they are here, the predictive value of this trade really, I'd say, is 90% or greater. We, we, we have an, a strict adherence to market structure. We're only taking trend trades. And what we're looking is we're looking for everything that we can to throw into the trade to confirm that not only market structure, price action, uh, the 50 and the 15 are down on our trading time frame, but multiple other time frames, which is what the background bias represents. And recently, I found that trading into the point of control uh, or trading into uh, the value area low or value area high has become a significant problem and handed us a lot of losers. And now look at these trades right here. Now remember these we're trading them in the trading room. And we have a move to the downside, a move to the upside, and here's a break of the 50. Now, you don't have background bias. So you know that the 15 and the 50 are not moving to the downside on higher time frames. And you don't have any correlative markets. They're all yellow. It's a loser. If you try again, here's a move to the downside, a retracement right back to the 50. You can see that the modified 15 is continuing to push down. But again, you don't have market, you don't have the background bias, and now you only have one quant line. Another loser. Same thing here, move to the downside move to the upside that's a four tick loser again here to the downside it's another loser so it filters out all of these trades no background bias you don't anticipate that the trade is going to move to the downside because you know it's got multiple areas of support that it's got to break and there's nothing to, to, for you to say, you know what, we'll support break. Because you don't have triple quants. The first time you do is here. And that triple quant signal, along with background bias, gives you a really, really nice winner. Same thing here, same thing here. And it allows you to skip this whole area of what turns into be nothing but chop. And any anticipation of a move to the downside, you don't even think about. Even though the modified 15 is, is pressing down hard.
Now, we don't trade into unbroken pivots, and we don't trade into the point of control. I mean, here, the market's just really, really, just very, very level. Now, if you took this trade on two quants, it's very risky. It works. It went up five. It's our first target is five. But you're looking to break the point of control. Uh, I'm sorry, the value area high. The thing is, you're trading off the point of control. It's a very, very tough trade. I wouldn't take it. You're looking for the... I don't know background bias here. I remember this in the live trading room. I wouldn't take it. What you're looking to do is to stack everything you can in your favor on a really, really nice setup. And we can find so many of them that... It doesn't pay to take a trade that has any any kind of major associated risk. Same thing here, where you can get caught on and, and really get killed. And if you look here, you have a quant line that's green. So you're never going to get a successful short trade when you have a green quant line. At least it's very unlikely. You have a bunch of correlative markets that are moving up. They're not just moving sideways. So this is not going to happen. Now, eventually, the market does break to the downside. But all of these trades would have, been, would have stopped you out in order to eventually get a trade that, that's, that's against this green quant line. You want to use the quant line as your friend. And here is the trade. You move to the downside, the upside, to get the retracement, you, you've got background bias with you, and you've got on this trade two out of three quant lines. You're going to get a small winner. The market moves down, retraces, right off resistance. Here, you have all three quant lines with you. And now the market gives you a big winner. So you just wait. 22 ticks. You just wait for a very, very conservative signal when at least two of the three quant lines are with you. And you can see here, during this period of chop, and remember, price action on the chart has not it, it is in no way no way influences the quant lines and that middle quant line is going from green to red the bottom quant line is yellow all the way through the upper quant line is going from green to red there's not even anything close to green 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 or red 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 there's nothing here to trade and you know it from the quant lines this is a really interesting setup right here Here's a move to the downside, a nice retracement, and a potential continuation short. There's nothing wrong with that trade, except look what the quant line does for you. It says, no way, one of the quant lines is green. And what happens? These are one of those trades where when you look at them before we had the quant lines, you've got a nice move to the downside, a nice retracement, the 15's down, the 50s down and you say to yourself why did this trade reverse now we know a bunch of correlative markets were all moving to the upside and bam up you go getting yourself out of all, of what what could have easily have been a potential loser triple quants and a huge move to the upside. Now I want to I want to bring in another market and show it to you. I want to bring in here our bonds. Bonds are really hard to trade, and there are very very few rooms, trading rooms that trade bonds, because they're so tough. They trade slow, and they're very, very difficult to deal with. But 
the number of correlative markets on bonds re only required us to make two quant lines. But when you get a green green or a red red on bonds, you've got yourself a very, very powerful trade. Now we need to find a really good entry. Here we, here is here is one right here. There's a retracement, the move down, dual quants, green, background bias, best color. Candle surrounded by order flow and momentum. Up you go. Now now bonds are thirty two are thirty one dollars and fifty cents a tick. If you hit our tar if you based on our trading, if you hit uh, eleven ticks, you make over six hundred dollars on one trade. If you go seven and take it out at seven, you make over four hundred on one trade. So on this single move with dual quants, everything in your favor, you get seven. And you get six. You get 13 ticks. That's all you need for the day. Let's look for another trade. That we would have taken. I'm, I'm not. One of the things I'm doing is I'm. I am skipping the overbought, oversold trades. Here's. There's. A, here's a trade. The downside, the retracement, the move to the downside, dual quants red. Now, it doesn't go very far. And the fact is, it's a perfect signal, but it doesn't give you a first target. Oh, it does give you a first target. Because you're going to go, you're going to come down to here. And then, if, and then if you do what we do, actually, it's never going to take you out. It's just going to take you out of the trade after it goes five. Then you re-enter right here. And you get yourself another move to the downside. And four. Now, we've got this retracement here and a potential move to the downside. We wouldn't take that entry or this entry. First of all, it's very dangerous to take a third retracement in a trend. And if you look at the MA diff here, because the MA diff is as important as any other number, you're at 13. And on a three range chart, max you want to be is eight, maybe push it to 10. But at 13, you're oversold. Now, this would have been a successful trade here, but you just wouldn't take it because we're looking to do everything we can to avoid risk. And we want to take the trades that are not overbought and not oversold. Now, here's a successful trade without background bias. But you have the dual quants. And it's up to you on your risk assessment whether you want to challenge that fact. I would wait for this trade. There's background bias. There's the dual quants. Although I'm going to give up some ticks on the trade I let go, that's the most conservative entry there is. And you wind up getting a very, very nice trade. And you can see how the point of control here, here how the point of control holds up price to the downside. And I'll just show you one more market. I'll show you the ES. Because the ES also is not that easy to, to trade. A lot of people trade it, but not that many people trade it successfully. And when they do, usually what they get are very small amounts. But the ES is a triple quant market also. You want to get at least two out of three markets. The first and third lines on the ES are the critical lines. You want that first and third line with you on a trade. Now, so you're, now there are going to be trades that are successful that set up where you don't have them. But when you trade with specificity, that's what you have to give up in order to avoid the losers. Now, the one thing that I'm not getting on here, let me just...
me do this because I, I, I don't have any background bias. And sometimes that happens. There we go. Now, here's a trade right here. There's the move to the downside, the upside. It gives you some heat, but your entry is here, and the trade goes here. It's not a big trade, but here's another trade. Now, on this trade, you wait for the correlative markets to roll. Remember, the first and third are your key markets. You could have taken the entry here or taken it here. Neither one of them would have stopped you out. And you get yourself a very, very nice trade. Now, for some reason, we just don't, I don't have any background bias. And let me just see here how, how many days back I have it. I only have it set for ten, three. Let me just set it for ten. I, but I think you can see how much more specificity you get and how the, predicted, the positive predictive value of a trading entry goes way up if you wait for the appropriate background bias and you wait for the quant lines to roll. And how sometimes they're not going to be in your favor and the trade will work but that's the downside of trading with the kind of specific to try to uh, the downside of trading with the kind of specificity that we use. Now let's find ourselves a really nice trade. Now here's a nice trade. You have to make an assumption here that the value area low is going to break, and you have so much going for you here: the triple quants, background bias. Look at the size of the volume on the chart, way at the bottom. The volume bars are really high. So the market's really moving hard. You're going to get this move, then you're going to get the retracement. Now this is the best trade. You're trading below the value area low. You break it, you come back, it acts as resistance to the upside, and there's your big move. And if you have the patience to wait for these moves, you are gonna, you're going to trade with tremendous positive predictive value. You're going to get about 90% of your trades as winners. It just takes a tremendous amount of patience to let, those, to let the trades, that, that's, that, that is um, four and a half points right there with everything going for you. And the chance that that trade is going to uh, blow up in your face is very, very low. Now here's another one. We're a little bit off the modified 15, but this has so much going for it. It's not a huge trade. You've moved to the upside, you have a retracement. You have three quant lines. All the correlative markets are in your favor, and you're trading right off the value area low. And you got yourself a point and a quarter, and I'll take a point and a quarter any day of the week. Same thing here. Triple quants. This isn't a big trade, but it's a successful trade. Another point, a point and a half. So I think I think you really see what I'm talking about. Um, now, right now we have quant lines on the ES, the YM, the Dow, the Nasdaq, bonds, notes, crude oil, gold, and gold. Oh, and the six E, and they're all of tremendous value, along with background bias in getting a successful trade. Now the markets that we're going to be adding are silver, palladium, heating oil, um, soybeans, corn, 
and wheat. And ultimately, what we're, go what we're going to do, um, we're going to make this a separate standalone indicator that you would have to pay separate for if you don't own the software. If you own the software, you get it uh, for free. We're going to make a dashboard. And what the dashboard is going to do is when all the quant lines are green on any market, they're going to give you an audio, an auto audio and a visual beep. Intracandle. So you're going to have a dashboard that's going to be monitoring between 15 and 18 markets. And when you get a green, 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 or a red, red, red on any market, you're going to be able to just watch the dashboard and wait for them all to correlate in your direction. Now it's going to have a little bit of um, it's going to have a little bit of a brain because on a green, green, green price has to be above the 50 for you to get that visual or um, uh, um, the audio visual alert. And on the red, red, red price has to be below the 50 because we don't counter trend trade. We only go long above the 50, short below. So price has to be below on a red, red, red for you to get that uh, the dashboard to give you the alert above to give you an alert on um, on uh, a green, green, green. Uh, now, if I didn't mention copper, copper is another market. Now, all these markets are impossible to watch um, at the same time. But copper, uh, palladium, silver... They give you extremely lucrative trades, and they're and they're very trendy markets. They trend. Also, corn, uh, soybeans, wheat, also trend. You just have to sit and um, they eat up a lot of your screen time if you sit and wait for a perfect trade to set up. Now, the other thing that we may add to the dashboard is that you're going to have to have this green background bias for a long, be above the 50. And be green, green, green. Now, if you get that, essentially, there's a, you you could have you very, very likely to have an impending trade. And you may not. You need a retracement into the trend and a continuation. But that's going to alert you that to move over to that market, bring it up, and at least watch it over in the corner. Now, the other indicator that we just added, and we're still working on it, is um, market profile and I traded without market profile for many 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 years and never found it to be necessary but recently it's become very very important now I don't have the histogram displayed because uh, for, for a specific reason I don't want people to use the histogram on the right line system um, I believe the histogram is important if you're market profile traders. And we're not really market profile traders. People use that histogram to look for, for, um, for nodes where there, where there are areas where there's very little, at, you know, pr at price at volume, where, where there's small, um, where there's little volume at a given price. But we're not going to take entries off of market profile. Uh, even though the indicator, when we're finished, will display a histogram if you want if you want to see it, I think it just clutters the chart. What we want to do is be very careful about trading into the point of control, value area high or value area low. And and just to if you don't know what uh, market profile is, I'm just going to review it really quickly for those people that don't that don't know it. It's a very simple explanation. And a lot of people make it very complicated, but it's very simple. Between the value area high and the value area low, that's where 70% of all the volume that crossed the market on that trading day exists. So it's a dynamic, it's a, it's a, it's a dynamic set of lines, and they move intracandle. But this is the lower end of the 70%. This is the higher end of the 70%. Now, if this is an evenly distributed histogram, the point of control might be in the middle. But the point of control is usually not. The point of control is the area where 
most volume crossed at a given price. So if you look right here on the ES right now, now if we go to the right edge, let's go to the right edge. We go to the right edge right now. Most volume has crossed to 2107. The value area low is 2105. And the value area high, if I can find it, they're going to be pretty pretty set pretty far apart potentially when you start the session. Let me move over just a little bit here. Here we go. There they are. Now, since most volume occurs within these two lines, the value area low and the value area high, when th this is going to act as an area of resistance to the upside. Because, because it's unusual for price to go higher than this line. Remember, 70% is just about two standard deviations. Two standard deviations exactly would be 66, I think 0.66%. Two-thirds. So this is an area of resistance to the upside. Because price just doesn't move above this very, very often. Here's an area of support to the downside. And the point of control is where most people like to trade crude, or the ES in this case. So there's a lot of people sitting here with buy and sell orders waiting. Now, if, you, if we had the pivot indicator set, the reason I don't have the pivot, the pivot sensitivity indicator is set at 150, because a lot of times the value area high and the value area low sit on top of pivots. Because pivots are where the market has, has rolled and changed direction. And if you look right here, see how the market just couldn't make it above the value area high? It just couldn't do it. And this is how to trade the value area low. You have, after watching it, you have price, it just moves laterally into a consolidation pattern on the value area low, value area high. The value area low, it may, it, it may, just, it may just bust it and go to the downside. But when it starts to do this, and for some reason, I can't get this thing to, uh, to give me a line here. Here we go. Eventually, it's going to break when it hits... Uh, resistance in this case. But this is an area of resistance to the downside. Point of control is where most people, it, it is the one price where, the, where more people have traded it than any other price. That's all we're interested in at right line. We don't care about the nodes. We're not market profile traders. We're trading price action, market structure. Um, we're trading multi-time frame analysis of trend uh, support and resistance and what we want to do is stay away or take trades into these three lines very carefully if we take a trade to the downside we want it to be super tight to resistance or to the upside super tight to support we want the candle to be outlined in order flow and momentum we want the background bias to be with us we want the quant lines, at least our majors, one and three to be with us. We want to have all that with us to tell us that we're going to probably break the, the uh, value area low. Otherwise, it's very, very uh, dangerous to trade into them. I saw, I've seen lots of trades just bounce. So you have to trade them with a lot of caution. So really... And here, and here is another great trade. Uh, I got to point this out. See, and this is where you got to do a risk analysis because sometimes you just get a trade that happens like this. It comes back and it sits right on top of the value area low. 
I mean, it's got tremendous support right here. Now, you only have one quant line. And you'd really like to have the first and the third at least. Now, these two, the markets in, in these two correlative uh, lines, the analysis that these two are doing, are moving flat. They're not moving against you, but they're not moving with you. But you've got such tremendous support here on the value area low and the 15, the modified 15, that if you took this trade to the upside, it would be a good trade. And you don't get a reversal candle till it hits the point of control. And it bounces, starts moving sideways, 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 and eventually it moves up in, in a manner that we can't take the trade because we're on a yellow modified 15. But it, but it just shows you that strict adherence to struct market structure, support and resistance, value area low, really the one thing that you want your software to provide you with is risk analysis on every trade to be able to tell you exactly how risky the trade is, how safe, how risky. Now, if, you, if, you, if part of your trading strategy is you only wanted the first, you will not take a trade without the first and third quant line, you let this trade go. And never worry about letting a trade go if it doesn't meet all the parameters that you need to take a, take a long trade or a short trade. But here's another one. And really, what I'm just showing you here is how important that value area low is. It comes down, and it's sitting right off the value area low. You have two quant lines. You'd like to get that first one, but you don't have it. But you have a tremendous amount of support. And up you go. Come back. And up you go. So that's how we really um, encompass the two. And uh, you know, last week in the in the live trading room, we made just under two thousand um, dollars, taking into account our um, uh, our ATM strategy. And here's here's just another really really great trade. A move to the downside. Uh, I keep press, pressing the wrong button. Sorry. And I could really show these to you. But really what's so powerful about this is on this trade, you have all three quant lines. Because what you see on the candle is going to be to the left of the lines, right here. And you're trading. Okay, my pleasure, MG. And there is the quant line acting as an area of resistance to the upside. This is a very, very high probability win to the downside. Now, the funny thing is, if you took this trade here and moved it to the upside, you never got stopped out. This, this high is equal to the high of this candle, and eventually you're going to get yourself a really big win here. So that's really it. I really, what, really what, I, what, what I wanted to show you was how we tried to trade with reduced risk. We want multi-time frame analysis of support, resistance, and trend to be on our side with the dark green or with the dark pink here. We want the quant lines to be in our favor. And if possible, we want the candle to be outlined in order, flow, and momentum. And that's the uh, yellow outline or the, um, the red or the yellow outline. And we only want to trend trade. 50 down, 15 down, 50 up, 15 up. And that's and that's really our um, our basic uh, our basic mantra. Now we just started creating the quant line. Um, I'm sorry, the um, the market profile. And we're going to be sending it out to all of our members early in the early in the week. Um, we just finished it. We we're beta testing it and, and, and moving it around. So that's it. So you can, uh, now, uh, now for Father's Day, what we're doing is we're making it so that normally we sell the quant lines and, and the basic platform separately. Um, we have a special where you can buy the whole thing in one. 
um, or if you want, you can only buy one quant line for one market. If you just trade the ES and you want the ES quant line, you can just um, you can just purchase the one quant line. If you want the whole quant line suite, you get all the add-ons. Like right now, we have about nine or ten markets when we get copper, silver, uh, palladium, heating oil, um, soybeans, corn, and wheat, and the dashboard. Um, those will be part of uh, um, part of what you get on that. You know what, Frank? We purposely want to only use for us. We just want to use the daily. That's not. And it's not giving anything away. Um, we just want to use the day's um, market profile. We could set it for a week. Uh, we could set it for a month. Um, but because we are really not market profile traders, um, you know, I've I've looked a lot at Sierra charts and market delta. Those are market profile traders, and they could, they'll trade a day, a week, and a month market profile. They'll trade multiple market profiles. Um, remember that as the market profile goes out from a day to a week, um, the lines are going to become um, potentially stronger, but they're going to get further and further apart and a little bit less relevant to what price to what what's happening here and when you get a daily market profile the value area high value area low and point of control are very dynamic as price like like in a down market on crude you're going to see that the value area high uh, and the value area low are all going to fall below the 50 and the point of control is going to start getting pushed into the value area low. We want it to be very, very reactive to what's going on on today's chart. Uh, so, so we, so that's really our our take on market profile. If we wanted to change our whole our whole philosophy and become market profile traders, we could put up multiple charts. But we really don't want to do that. But you can see that it does store data because. As you move across, you can go back and see where the market profile was a week or a month later. But it's only based on what happened on that training session. And the histogram you see is only going to be based on that particular trading session. And we do that on purpose. And, and we found that it works very, very well. And when you start going to a week, we found it to be much less reactive the value area high and low don't move. They're very stable. Point of control is very, very stable. And what we want are very dynamic. Uh, it's a very dynamic market profile. And it really works great on, on, a, on a daily profile. So that's really it. Uh, I mean, you know, if you're interested in the integrated platform with the market profile, with the, um, with the quant lines, you can just, just send us an email. I mean, we all, we do have a really nice uh, Father's Day special, uh, but this is our philosophy, and I just really wanted to go over with go over it with everyone in the room, and uh, show what I believe to be uh, an extremely powerful system. Um, I know that there are other good systems out there. I don't know if there's anything better though um, than what we have. We trade very very conservatively, stay away from areas of, of support and resistance. And we really look for background bias to help us out on the trade. And if you have patience and you have discipline, um, like we did last week, you can you, uh, on three contracts you can push two thousand two thousand dollars a week. And it all depends on what the market gives you, but um, you can really really make nice money in a in, in, in a discipline that's extremely difficult um, to be uh, professionally successful at. Um, so that's really about it. Thank you, thank you, Frank. So listen, guys. Everyone have a you know have a wonderful Father's Day, and uh, it, you can also come into the room on a free trial. Um, if I can find, I'll just show you our. You know, there's some people out there. Let me just. There's our slide. You go to RightLineTrading.com, and you'll see a link to our daily net equity in the trading room. 
uh, our daily net equity for the auto traders, our ES and Russell Gold and Crude Auto. You'll see a link to a Contact Us page, and you'll see a link to a free trial. And um, if you uh, like a free trial, if you let us know today, we'll put you in the room early Monday morning. You can email us directly at info at rightlinetrading.com. We'll let you do it, Rick, yes, if, you, if you're in the room. We will. So if you sign up for a free trial, we'll hold it. We will. We, we're not, we won't penalize you for it. Th thank you, GS. So listen, everyone, have a wonderful, um, a wonderful weekend. It's almost over. I'm really sorry to see that it's ending. But we'll be in the room at a quarter after eight tomorrow. Uh, we trade four instruments. We trade the Russell. Uh, we trade uh, bonds. We trade the ES. And we trade crude oil. And they've been doing really, really well for us. Once we get the dashboard up, we're going to be trading 15 instruments in the trading room. Just waiting for the dashboard to give us the audible visual alert. And then we're going to move to markets. We're going to be taking trades on soybeans, wheat, copper, palladium, silver, on all these different markets. Because the dashboard is going to lay out for us a market that's already lining up. And we don't have to sit and wait. So listen, everyone. Hope to see you in the trading room on Monday. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, have a great, great evening. Take care.